that uh, God, uh, that this year, 2019, that God will give us all a supernatural grace and strength to go through whatever we have to go through this year in Jesus' name. Amen. And the scripture references Ephesians 4, 7, and he has generously given each one of us supernatural grace. Say supernatural grace. So I have copies. I want you, well, I'm going to give you one if you, um, Rachel, if you haven't received one, put your hand up. I'll have Rachel come by and give you one. These are, this is very, very important. Put it on your fridge. Put it in your notebook. If you need two of them, take two. I have more copies. But um, I just really believe that uh, this is a word of the Lord for this year, that he's given us a supernatural grace and strength to go through whatever we have to go through. And I went through some uh, challenging things this week for this, this month. And every time I was in whatever the situation was, this quickly came to my spirit. Yeah. <laughs> that you're giving me a supernatural strength and grace to go through whatever I have to go through this year. So it puts a different perspective on it. It causes you to know that whatever you face or going to go through this year, um, that there is a grace and a strength. Here you can sit, sit these on the back table, baby. Thank you, sweetie. That there really is a supernatural grace and strength to, to bring us through. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So we ready? Oh, I, I, um... I'm going to do something first, and then I'm going to... We're going to have a little fun. Put, you can put your Bibles there. Everybody get your phones out. Y'all got your phones anyway. Okay, yeah, make sure your phones is on mute. Um, so I'm just so glad about tonight and what God's going to do, and I just really had an excitement. I thought I was going to take a nap today, but I just was studying in the Word and never did take a nap, which is good. But um, every fourth Saturday of the month, I'm going to teach uh, a class on a, a master class, which basically will be a, a class that will empower you and strengthen you. I probably will be a little more more raw and transparent than I am on Saturdays or Sundays. But if, I want it to be a cutting edge night for people that are in leadership, that people that are in the body of Christ, that will that really trigger you and charge you. And I will say it again because I'm going to say it on our Facebook page, but since it's family time now. But it's, it's not going to be your regular Mary had a little lamb message. So it's going to be it's, it's, going, to, it's going to be something that stretches you. Um, I'm going to say some things at times that may seem like I'm throwing shade, but it's not shade. It's just you got to say what you got to say. And you shall know the what? Truth. And the truth shall what? Truth. Amen. So I'm going to, I will probably, you know, be cutting edge. But my thing is, uh, I want to shake you all. Because I know that there's greatness inside of everyone in here tonight. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. And I want to shake you out of mediocrity. I want to shake you out of just doing just a little dab will do. And really empower you and encourage you to, and thrust you to do what it is that God has really put you here to do on earth. Amen? So we're, we're going to do that. But first of all, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, uh, Joe Osteen tells jokes, I'm going to do a giveaway. How's that? <laughs> okay. So hope you have your phones out. This is going to be for the first person. The first person. Say the first person. First person. Okay. The first person who can show me on their cell phones a picture of you and your immediate family. First person. Come on up. Let me see. It is. Cause, well, no, it's not really. You don't have nobody. I didn't say. Well, I guess it could be your brother, your immediate family. Immediate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he already got it. He won. Yeah, let's give him a hand. Show him what you show me. Show him that. All right. Give away. God bless you. All right. That's a little something. Oh, is it just one? One what? One giveaway? I got another one. Two? I got another one? Can you let me do my job, Matt? I don't want to be the only person. Why not? Oh, Matt. Well, give it back. I'll give it to him. Come on, give Matt some love. Yeah. All right, the next one is the first person who can show me a selfie of themselves in black and white. Uh-huh, we're going to be having some fun on these nights. Oh, boy. Oh, you trying to do it? Come on, black and white, selfie of yourself. Of yes, of, is there an echo in the building? Oh, yes. You got it? <laughs> is that fake? Don't, okay, come on. Is it fake news? No, it's Okay. Let me see. Make sure she ain't just take it. No, that's it. Good. God bless you. All right, give God a hand of praise. I said, give God a hand of praise. Y'all ain't moved a hand. 
Wrong with Carl tonight. All right, so we're going to be doing fun. We want to do fun stuff, cutting edge stuff. The, as, the, as the months and the years go on, it'll, it'll, it, as, as the time goes on, it'll be bigger gifts, more gifts. So you can get start where you at. Don't stop from the day of small beginners. Amen? That's right. And they'll be happy because they got a little Chick fil A lunch in there. Say Chick fil A. And that's anointed to go to Chick fil A, right? Amen. Okay, so I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to um, go into the Word, so we're going to get ready for recording. Amen? Brother Will, you can record me after I pray. Uh, you, I'll get ready for you to record me, then we're just going to go right in. Amen? Y'all, I encourage you to take notes. Um, if something sparks you, speaks to your spirit, write it down. A lot of times we get consumed. We can get consumed and take a lot of notes. But I, I, I'm more concerned that you... Whatever uh, speaks to your spirit, that you write it down and, and take it, because you might have. I might give you ten points, uh, hypothetically give you ten points, but really one is raining to you. Whatever's raining to you, that's what you need to write down, because that's where God is speaking. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. I think I did all my. I'm just glad to have you all tonight. So, and buckle your seatbelts. Uh -oh. I might say some stuff that you know, ooh, Pastor Mike, not not too bad. Y'all know there's a grace on my life. I'm not gonna be, but. Um, I thank God for his, his supernatural grace. Amen? Okay, we're going to go to the word. First Peter, the second chapter. First Peter, the second chapter. And this is not Sunday morning, so I don't have to rush because we we got time. Because class is in session. Amen? Amen. Let me show, show, show them our apples for all my students. <laughs> thank you. Amen. Amen. Y'all better get that one. The one I touch is really anointed. <laughs> Mm. All right, First Peter, the second chapter. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation, but uh, it's all good. Amen. First Peter, second chapter, verse one, from the Passion Translation. Amen. And the heading of my Bible says, "Growing in Holiness." So it says, uh, "I want to say it again because sometimes I talk fast. I don't want to mess up." First Peter, second chapter, verse one. We there? You happy? Amen. amen. If you're happy, yeah, you know what's say amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. So abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of jealousy, and slander. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for life. Especially now that you have had a taste of the goodness of the Lord Jehovah and have experienced his kindness. Amen. I love that it says a taste of the goodness of the Lord. And the word says, and I believe it's in Psalm, oh, taste and see yeah, yeah, yeah. that the Lord is good. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, right. I love this in Psalm, but I know it's in the Bible. Amen. Verse 4. It says, so keep coming to him who is a living stone. We don't just go to God once and then that's it. We keep, it says, so keep coming to him who is the living stone. I know without a shadow of a doubt, I gotta keep coming to him, coming to God. Yes, amen, amen. Yes, amen. With the challenges of life that we go through, yes. the way the enemy hits us by surprise, things that try to pull us down, discourage us, we have to keep coming in. Church I gotta keep, I gotta keep yes. coming to him. Yes. So keep coming to him who is the living stone. Yes. Though he was rejected and discarded by men, but chosen by God and it's priceless in God. So let me tell you something. You may be discarded by men or women. But you all in here are chosen by God. Yeah. Say, I'm chosen by God. Chosen by God. People might not like you. People might not agree with you. Uh, especially when you come, when you really come into that place of doing what it is that God has called you and sanctioned you and put you on earth to do. Everybody's not going to like that you're doing what God wants you to do. Everybody's not going to come with an apple in their hand and just say, oh, hey, I'm so happy for you. Rah, rah. No. Uh -huh. And it's sad to say, but I'm going to say it, most times your, your greatest warfare comes from the church and from your family. Amen. And if not your church, believers. This is master class, so I'm sorry. I am. I'm just scratching. I'm, I'm going to say it like I mean it. So he coming to him who is a living stone, though he was rejected and discarded by men, but chosen by God and is priceless in God's sight. You are Chosen by God, mm -hmm. and you are priceless in God's sight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. That's so Chosen by God, mm -hmm. and priceless in God's sight. Glory to God. Come and be his living stones who are continually being assembled into a sanctuary of, for God. For now you serve as holy priests 
offering up spiritual sacrifices that he readily accepts through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, look, I lay, it, I lay a cornerstone in Zion, a chosen and priceless stone. Whoever believes in him will certainly not be disappointed. Let me tell you something. As we as believers, as we stick with God, yes, there's going to be times where you're disappointed. But let me tell you something. When you stick with God, he will not disappoint you. You're going to go through things you don't understand. You're going to just go through challenges of life, maybe loss of loved one. Maybe people don't affirm you in ministry. Maybe people don't like you. But let me tell you something. God is the God who affirmed you. He called you. He chose you by name. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. What verse is that? I don't got to talk, walk, talk, walk away. Thank you. For it says in Scripture, look, I'm going to go back to five. Come and be his living stones who are continually being assembled into a sanctuary. We're continually being assembled into a sanctuary for God. God mold me. God shape me. God make me. God get the junk out of me. Get the critical spirit out of me. Get the self-righteousness out of me. Get the laziness and slack out of me that I can do a work for you. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Who are continually being assembled into a sanctuary for God. For now you serve as holy priests. We serve as holy priests. Offering up spiritual sacrifices that he may readily accept through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, look, I lay in, I lay a cornerstone in Zion. A chosen and priceless stone. Whoever believes in him will certainly not be disappointed. And that's what I want to say. Continue to believe God. David said I would have fainted yes. unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. Disappointments will come, but I tell you, God won't disappoint you. And even when, law, when, when, when we suffer loss, we suffer rejection, we suffer disappointment. Let me tell you something. When you stick with God, he has a way of turning things around. How do you know that, Pastor Mark? Because Romans 8 says, and we know, what do we know? That all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and to those that are called according to his purpose. Verse 7 says, as believers, you know his great worth indeed. His preciousness is imparted to you. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected and discarded has now become the cornerstone. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock to trip over. They keep stumbling over the message. Why do they keep stumbling over the message? Because they refuse to believe it. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And this they were destined to do. But you, say me. <laughs> but you are God's chosen chosen treasure. Say, I'm God's I'm chosen treasure. Priest who are king. Say, I'm a priest. I'm a priest. Who is a king? Who is a, king? A, spiritual a spiritual nation. Say, I'm a spiritual nation. Say, I'm set aside, set aside. As, God's devoted. as God's devoted. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. He called us all out of darkness yes. to experience his glorious light. Let me tell you something. We could all still be in the world. We could still be godless. We could still be sinners. But God called us out. He called us out because he, he had a work for us to do. He called us out because he loved us. Amen. So he called me, call me out. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. Thank you. And now he claims you as his very own. He, he did this so that you would broadcast. Say broadcast. Y'all know when y'all hear a good restaurant or you hear some good news or some of us who haven't been delivered, you get a gossip spirit. Y'all not saying nothing. And you start broadcasting stuff. You hear, child, did you hear this? Did you hear? Blah, 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 blah. He said he did this so you would broadcast his Glorious wonders throughout the world. We're his uh, broadcast team. Yeah. We're his news advisory team. Yeah. Spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Right. What are we to broadcast? His glorious wonders. Oh. How I was sick and path, could have passed it on the job, but God got me to the hospital in the nick of time. And what they thought it was, it wasn't. And I got rest and I got restored. When the enemy wanted to take me out. God said, oh, you can't have him. He's mine. Yes. Yes. Not so. Yeah. Right. Amen. So we should broadcast. We should testify of his goodness in all of our lives. We all have a testimony. Mm -hmm. How do I know you have a testimony? Because how many people have been through a test? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You can put up two hands and a foot. Yes. We've been through a test, so you have a testimony. Amen? Amen. And we're to spread his glorious wonders throughout the world. For at one time, you were not God's people. For at one time, you weren't saved. That's true. 
You didn't know God. You were atheists. You were Jehovah's Witness. You were whatever. You didn't know God. Say it one time. It says, but now you are. Say, I am. At one time, you knew nothing of God's mercy. Because, you, because how come you did? Because you hadn't received it yet. But now you are drenched with it. You are drenched with God's mercies. Amen? So our key scripture for tonight is going to be, um, this is where we're going to get our thought for tonight. It's going to be from 1 Peter 2 and 9. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all excited? You got your seatbelts on? Amen. Well, take them off. <laughs> you might want to run or something. 1 Peter 2 and 9, King James Version. This is where we're going to take our theme for this night. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous night, light. And I come tonight to challenge you all by the spirit of God and by the word of God that he placed in my spirit tonight is to not, that the thought for tonight is normal versus exceptional. Say normal, normal. versus exceptional. And tonight I have an exceptional crowd here tonight. You are exceptional people in the kingdom of God. And I challenge you tonight to not to be normal. That's good. Oh. Amen. I want to play, I'm going to play with some words. Let's go back to verse 9. Verse 9 says, it, it doesn't say here, but you are a normal generation. Right. That mess is good. <laughs> That's me and little Pastor Faith Slate. We say that mess is good. So if you're too spiritual, you can just show it for message. <laughs> If you too spiritual to say mess, because some of y'all say worse than mess. <laughs> Amen. But it, is, it doesn't say here, Pastor Faith, but you are a normal generation, a normal priesthood, a normal nation, or a normal people. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation and a peculiar people. So you're chosen, you're royal, you're holy, and you're peculiar. And none of that goes under the word normal. Those attributes go with exceptional. And I want it, I want it to be in your spirit tonight that you know that you're exceptional. The word says we perish for lack of knowledge. But if you lack the knowledge of knowing that you're exceptional, you'll never walk in that in that exceptional path. Because people put you down and say, oh, you can't minister. God never called a woman. The devil is alive. He called all of us. Amen. And the word is no Greek, no Jew, male nor female. We're all, we're all one in the spirit of God. Amen. And I challenge you tonight to come out to shake off normalcy. And to embrace exceptional. Say exceptional. exceptional. I want exceptional. As I was studying that this week and I was encouraged, I went to a an awesome service Sunday uh, morning in Elizabeth and the man of God was teaching. He didn't teach on that, but he mentioned the word exceptional. And something, that's why I tell you, when you come to church, come, one word can spark you. I'm telling you, one word can change your life. That's right. So when you come in, come in with, don't just come in, oh, oh, I ain't feel like going to church today. No, come in with, say, Lord, let me hear one thing yes. that's going to spark me. One thing that's going to change me. One thing, uh, Sister Darcy, is going to change the course of my life. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Isn't that good? Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Are we going to, I'm, just, I'm just laying foundation. We're going to go deep tonight. As CDJ says, can I go deeper? <laughs> 1 Peter 2, 9, New Living Translation says, but you are not like that. For you are a chosen people, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The Amplified, by Amplified Translations from 1 Peter 2 9 says, But you are a chosen race, 
a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The NIV says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen? So I, I just want to build you all tonight. I want you, to, I want you to leave tonight with exceptional thinking. I want you to leave tonight with an exceptional mindset. I want it, that word exceptional to be in your spirit. Amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 Normal. The word normal means conforming to a standard. Usual. Typical. Mm. None of you in here are, nor are standard people. None of you in here are usual people. None of you are typical people. You're not normal. If you're here with me, you're sure not normal. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Amen? Amen. Some synonyms for the word uh, normal are usual, standard, typical, common, ordinary, customary, conventional, habitual, accustomed, expected. I don't want to go to church and know what's going to happen when I walk through the door. I don't want to go, I know at 11 o'clock, this is what's, they're going to march at 11 o'clock. 11 one they're going to sing a hymn. 12 o'clock, 12 they're going to do the offering. This, you, I don't want that. Right. I'm not saying that when you go to church, it should be a circus. But the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And, and that's one thing, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that's one thing, even when I do things here, like I change chairs and stuff around, because I don't want to see the same old thing all the time. And if you can't make big changes, make the small changes you can make. Right. Some of y'all, you're believing God for better homes. You're believing God for good furniture. You're believing God for new furniture, for a new house. You're believing God. But you know what you do? In the meanwhile, while you while you got stuff, I mean, it's not doing, keep it nice. Keep what you have nice. Right. You get tired of it, move the chair over there. Just change it around. You know, give it, give it a different look. Yep. Amen? Because the word says when you're faithful over little, He'll make you a little much, and you just keep believing until things shift and change in your life. Yes. Amen. Amen? Yep. Amen. So, still dealing with the, some synonyms for normal, regular, routine, day to day, set, fixed, traditional, ordinary, average, run of the mill, middle of the road, plain, unexceptional, homely, predictable. I want to shake you out of that spirit of normalcy. Even when you go to work, drop a different way to work. <laughs> Amen. Just do something different. Something that's not normal. Say something that's not normal. Normal is also the usual, average, or typical state or condition of something. Exceptional is unusual and not typical. Say unusual and not typical. So synonyms for the word exceptional are unusual, uncommon, abnormal, atypical, extraordinary. I want y'all to be extraordinary people. Out of the ordinary, or like I say, out of the box, out of the way, rare, unprecedented, unexpected, surprising, bizarre. <laughs> Hallelujah. Peculiar, unheard of, out of the common, way out. Amen? Amen. You have to realize that you have too much, say, I have too much in me <laughs> to be normal. Too much in you. As I said earlier, we don't realize the knowledge of how exceptional we really are. Because we're destroyed for that lack of knowledge. But I'm telling you by the Spirit of God tonight, I, I stand strong and I walk as a prophet of God. That everybody that's in here under the sound of my voice, that you are not normal people. That you're exceptional. So I, let's, let's, let's do some class participation. Say, I'm no longer normal. I'm exceptional. Because I serve an exceptional God. And because I'm in Him and He's in me, I can't be normal. I have to be exceptional. Because I have to walk and talk in my daddy's footsteps. Exceptional. Now, some of the good stuff. 
I want to encourage you, uh, as exceptional uh, people, I want to encourage you in five, uh, five, five or six different aspects of being exceptional. Number one, I want you to be an exceptional person. Say an exceptional person. An exceptional man or woman, whether you're a senior citizen, whether you're a teenager, my teens, my young people, my millennials, my married people, my divorced people, my widows or widowers, my single people, maybe you're in a complicated situation or maybe you're separated. I want you to know that no matter what you've been through, no matter what your status is, that God is calling you to be an exceptional woman, an exceptional man, an exceptional teenager. Rachel and my teenager people in here. To be exceptional, say exceptional. exceptional. Glory to God. And, and with, with being exceptional, it means also being caring. So I want to talk about some uh, attributes, say attributes. attributes. Some exceptional attributes. Uh, caring, loving, affectionate, trusting, good listener, considerate. Amen? I want to talk to my exceptional singles. That my exceptional sh singles should look, you should look good all the time. Amen. Thank you. I got one exceptional single in three. I've been on the married folks in a few minutes. Don't let yourself go. You never know when you might meet someone. And you don't want to be walking down the street with them nylon shower caps on. And them fluffy slippers. Please wear that in the house and not that shop, right? Lord Jesus. Somebody said they got one of those. You never know who's watching you. That's true. Glory to God. And I know as single people, I know we get we get tired of waiting. We get lonely. I, I feel you. I, I know what single people go through. How do you know, Pastor Marcus? I'm single, so I know. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But I still want you to strive. Because let me tell you something. As exceptional single people, exceptional people, that means you should be looking for an exceptional man or woman in your life. Mm -hmm. Not any old bozo will do it. No. You want someone exceptional. If you're except, you want someone that's going to compliment you. Amen. Break it down. You want someone that's going to support you. You want someone that's not going to tear you down and tell you what you can't be. You're better off being single than being with the wrong person. All right. Number two, I want you to be an exceptional friend. Say exceptional friend. A good friend. Has good qualities and attributes. And the same attributes I, I put as person, caring, loving, affectionate, trusting, good listener, considerate. Um, I want you to be an exceptional friend that has good qualities. He that has friends must show himself friendly. Amen? So be that friend, be that exceptional friend when your friends need you, that they can talk to you and confide in you and you can hold their stuff. That you can be a listening ear. Amen? Yes. Sometimes people just need someone to listen to. Mm -hmm. They might not necessarily need to know what they would do if they were you. Just listen. Mm -hmm. Say exceptional friend. Exceptional friend. Amen. All right, number three. I might step on some of y'all toes. Number three, I want you to be an exceptional employee. Amen. Amen. How do I be an exceptional employee? Do more than expect it. To be an exceptional employee, be before time. You're supposed to be there at 11 o'clock and you just issued at 1059. <laughs> Amen. Be an exceptional employee. Just some practical stuff. Let me Have a good spirit. Don't be a problem employee. Don't be a complainer. Don't be messy. Don't be a gossip. We should have uh, exceptional business, exceptional entrepreneurs, and exceptional creative ideas. When companies are looking for exceptional employees, they should be calling the hope and say, Pastor Mark, who do you have that you can send over here? Who can you recommend? Y'all got quiet. I'm trying to stretch y'all. I'm trying to get us, when we get our mega church, when they call us and say, we just a pastor the hope, we need about 10 employees, 50, that you can send and know it's going to get the job done and keep their hands in their pocket. Y'all got quiet. Not be on your cell phones. Not scrolling and hitting hearts, likes, and shares while you're on the clock at work. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, heart. 
Oh, she passed. Oh, sad tear. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you know, all that kind of stuff. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to be an exceptional employee. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to do the leadership part next, last. That's going to be number five. This is good. Be an exceptional wife and husband. Uh, was that four? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I, this is going to be four. You, I got it in my notes. You know what happened? I got four, but the four I'm going to make last. Oh, okay. So this is four okay. according to my notes, but I felt that the shift is, so I'm shifting, okay? okay? So since you're writing, this can be your four. So as uh, I want you to be exceptional uh, wife or husband. Mm. Say exceptional. So the way you're exceptional is you look for ways to please them. Let me say that again. This is my, I'm going to make sure none of my married folks' ears got stopped up. You look for ways to please them and make them happy instead of complaining. That's the truth. I heard Joyce Meyer say there's some lonely lady out there that would love to take your husband. <laughs> some of y'all say, mm, you're going to have him. No, don't say that. Don't say that. Amen? So as you're being an exceptional husband or wife, uh, surprise them. They surprise them. Y'all get real quiet. Surprise. surprise them. Surprise your mate. And this can also go for friends too, but it's more so for uh, married people. Okay? Exactly. Amen. So surprise them. Study them. That's right. Study them. Study them. Listen to them. Let me get on the mic because I got some feedback out. Come sit down. Come sit down. All right. Now don't y'all be loud. We in class. Now. This ain't church. This is class. I want y'all to take it in. Amen? So I'm going to go back to that. Surprise them. Study them. Listen to them. People have ended up in divorce court and separated because people don't listen to their mates. That's the truth. They don't listen. Listen. And... Humble yourself and listen. listen. Listen without thinking you're right all the time. Amen. Listen and consider Amen. other Amen. people's thoughts. And when I say our relationship, it can be friendships too. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Surprise them. Study them. Listen to them. Get them something they have been talking about. Get them something they have been talking about. If it's something good, say, oh, somebody say, oh, I sure would like to have so and so and so. You know, when you surprise them and give it to them. These are just some good things that help you. Marriage go in a good way. I need to go for my single so you'll know these qualities when you get married. Amen? Okay, I want to give you five, the five love languages. These are very, very important. You need to find out your spouse's love language. Amen? Also good for friendships, but with limits. Say with limits. So the five love languages are number one. Words of affirmation. Using words, this is so good. Using words to build up the other person. Example, this is so funny. Listen to this. Example, thanks for taking out the garbage. Not saying it's about time you took the garbage out. The flies are going to carry it out for you. Oh, y'all need to say that again. Words of affirmation. Using words to build up. Say, build the other person. Not being stank and saying, thanks for taking out the garbage. Uh, the flowers will go to carry it out for you. Amen. So words of affirmation. Say words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Amen. Amen. So you want to definitely speak good words of affirmation. Let me tell you something. Words of affirmation will get you a long way. Long way. All across the board. When I say relationships, friendships, family, all. Number two, gifts. Say gifts. Yes. A gift says he or she was thinking about me. Look what they got me. So gifts. Number three, acts of service. Doing something for your spouse that you know they would like. Cooking a meal, washing dishes, vacuuming the floors, all are acts of service. So acts of service. Don't be talking, y'all not listening, y'all. Take these in, y'all need to be doing it. All the ones talking need to be doing it. Yeah. Amen. Amen, Amen. All right. 
We gotta quiet her down, man. We in class. Number four, quality time. Say quality time. Quality time. By which I mean giving your spouse your undivided attention. Taking a walk together or sitting on the couch with the TV off, phone under under draw somewhere, talking and listening. Amen. And number five is physical touch, whether it's holding hands, hugging, kissing, sex, all of our expressions of love. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure that we have, that we know our spouse's love language. Or even if it's a friend, know that know their love language. So if you have, if you have a good friend and you know that their love language is uh, words of affirmation, you may need to kind of listen to them, be a good listener. Amen? Amen. If you need quality time, cut cut quality time out for them. Amen. 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 Number what five? This is just some practical stuff I'm giving. Number five is be an exceptional student. Study. Do assignments on time for my kids in school and in college. Do assignments on time. Stay teachable. We should always be a student. I always want to be a student, always learning. No matter how old you get, always be an exceptional student. Even if you're not in school, always be a person that, that's apt and willing to learn. Always keep a teachable spirit. Amen, amen. These are all qualities that will make you an exceptional person. Awesome. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's go over. Let's go over what we went over, and then I'm going to go over the last one over, over in this area. So number one is what? Be an exceptional what? Person. person. Be an exceptional person. Number two. Exceptional friend. Be an exceptional friend. Number three. Exceptional employee. Exceptional employee. Number four. Exceptional wife or husband. Very good. Number five. Exceptional student. Exceptional student. And like I said, you don't have to be in school to be an exceptional student. Be a student of the word. Be a student in your in the church that God has called you to be in. Just you can you can come to church. God bless you, Pastor. You can come to church and not come in as a student. And you just come in as a as a pure or seat warmer. And you don't engage, you don't listen, you, 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 you your your body's here. But you somewhere else at Costco's. You at the mall. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise in this class. Amen. Okay, this is my last one. I'm glad I left this for last. I just felt led to. This is uh, exceptional leaders. Six. And I'm glad I kept this for last. Um, I want you to be exceptional pastors. Exceptional ministers, exceptional ministry leaders, exceptional prayer warriors, exceptional, Christ, except, exceptional Christians, exceptional. Having that difference about you, having that flair about you, having that anointing about you, that makes you exceptional. Everybody say exceptional. Exceptional. How do we become exceptional leaders? Number one, by spending time with God. Amen. You cannot be an exceptional person of God, a man or woman of God, no matter even if you don't even if you don't have a title. It's not the title that makes you. God makes you. God will make you if you never have a title. So it's not about a title. Amen. Amen? Amen. So uh, as exceptional leaders, it's, it's important that we spend time with God. And let me tell you something, as a leader, the enemy will allow you to do everything that will keep you from spending time with God. He'll keep you so busy, so distracted, so tired, so stressed out with the job, so stressed out with stuff, that everything else is first. And then when it's time to promote your ministries, the whole day gone by, your ministry ain't been promoted. It's time to do something to, to build uh, something for your ministry. To, to press it to your block, the whole day is gone. Like, man, I even, was even, wasn't able to hit my block today. Man, I was so overwhelmed at work past the day, I didn't even get the chance to work on the prayer summit. So I'm telling you, as exceptional leaders, it's going to be a fight. You have to discipline yourself and say, no, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm studying. 
I, you, I got to do what I got to I have to spend time with God. I need to hear God's voice. In order to be exceptional, you got you to gotta be able to hear God's voice and be able to, to press into what he's saying. Number two, the second way to be an exceptional leader is to spend time with God. Number two is spend time in the Word. Amen. You spend more time on your phone than you spend in the Word. You spend more time in Facebook than in His book. Amen? Amen. You spend more time scrolling and liking and sharing and hearting and sad faces and all on this than you spend in God's Word. Because let me tell you something. You could be on that phone and that, that phone, that time will just be be passing right on by. Amen. Amen. To be an exception, exceptional leader, you need to spend time in prayer. Amen. Pouring out. During this time of fasting, this was a time where I really was like, God, help me. How God, deliver me. God, strengthen me. Looking at myself. I wasn't looking at y'all. I'm looking at me. As the old saints used to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. As, exceptionally, you have to sit, spend time fasting and not just reading, but studying. So we want to spend time with God as exceptional leaders in the word, in prayer, in fasting, in studying. Amen? Amen? Because I want you all to be exceptional leaders and to have exceptional ministries. An exceptional ministry doesn't have to be a church. Pastor Faye has a ministry. She has the prayer ministry. She has the Global Compass prayer ministry that meets on the prayer line Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. That's a ministry. She has the prayer summit that she's launching now. Was it 12 year? 12 year prayer summit that she's been doing for 12 years. It's not a church. It's a ministry. So you can be under a local church, you can sit under a local pastor, but you can have ministries outside the church. And, and, and that's what you, you want to be covered, but you want to be able to flow in your ministry. Amen. You want to be able to do what it is that God placed you here on earth to do. God placed all of us here on earth to do something. Amen. Glory down. to God. Down. And I want to see your ministries exceptional. I want to see those of you that have churches, I want to see them exceptional. I want to see you be exceptional speakers. I want to see you be exceptional and anointed people that pray. So I, I'm stretching you in 2019 as leadership, special leadership of this house, that we're coming out of status quo. We're coming out of church as usual. We, got to, we have to press into the heart of God. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. I want to see you flow exceptionally in your gifts. You have gifts and talents and abilities. Some of you flow in the word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I want to see you. You're going to be pushed more to flow in your gifts, to, to, to release the word of the Lord into people's lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. I want to encourage you. It's exceptional leaders. Number one, feed your spirit from other strong leaders. I'm not the only person that can feed you. There's other men and women of God that are strong leaders. I listen to uh, Pastor Beverly a lot, and she tells me I'm listening to Miles Monroe, who did an awesome teaching on fasting. I listen to Pastor Bev, and she's, I mean, Pastor Ste Minister Stephanie, and she loves her little, what's your station you love to listen to? WMC. WMC, and she's just a member over there at WMC. She has a radio ministry. She loves, that's her station, and she listens to this. But that's good, because I want you to feed your spirit. Whoever speaks to you outside of me, I'm not the only voice in your life. If I'm your local pastor, I am the main voice. But no, there's other men and women of God that are anointed that can pour into you. And I don't care who, who, who catapults you, who shifts you, as long as you shift. And as long as you listen to healthy and sound teaching and sound doctrine and something, nothing that is crazy. Not from the granola ministry, fruity, flaky, and nutty. <laughs> Hallelujah, we got enough of that. I need solid people that can do the work of the Lord. Amen? Amen, amen. So number one, feed your spirit from other strong leaders. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I, I'll get to that. Number two, look for ways to do what you do differently. Look for ways to do what you do differently. Stop doing the same thing you've been doing for 10 or 15 Put a different twist. Ask out. He, we serve, I'm getting ahead of myself, we serve the God of creativity. Yes. <laughs> He's a creative God. And, and like I said earlier, 
Sometimes I just like to come in here for service and just change the chairs around. Yeah. Just to give it a different look. Just, to, just so we just look, oh, it looks a little different in here. You know what? Just to change stuff around. So sometimes we need to change things around. Mm-hmm. Look for ways to do what you do different. If you're a public speaker, if you speak before the people, um, get you some props. Look for creative ways to make the gospel attractive. Yes. Attractive to the millennials. Attractive to the teens, attractive to the young people, and attractive to the people that um, that you may see every day. See it different ways. Different ways. I love when I was in youth ministry, uh, when I was at uh, Second Baptist in youth ministry, I always look for props and different things to engage the youth with, so they could be engaged. Because I find I found out as I was in youth ministry and had different props or or engaged the youth and had them come up and do it, that it kept them awake and kept them engaged. And if you don't engage our young people, you don't engage people, you will lose them. Break it down. And I found it works so good. And people love, and the parents love when you engage their children. I always, I, I didn't like when uh, some churches in the church, one of the churches I was in, they would get youth ministers in to minister to youth, but they never minister to youth. That was for preaching to adults. I'm like, how come they get to minister and minister to youth and he's preaching to the adults? If you got somebody in, whenever people ask you to do something, do that assignment. Amen. So if I say come and minister to the youth, that means come and, 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 and find something creative to do, something to engage them. Because we can make the gospel attractive, mm-hmm. but it's up to us to tap into the creative God to do that. Mm-hmm. And you say, God, give me a creative idea. Give me a message. Give me something I can, something I can do to engage them. Amen? Amen. And I, this is how I want to stretch you all this year. Amen? Amen. Add an, number three, add an, add an exceptional different angle, even if it's a small angle. Add something different. Say, add something different. Add an exceptionally different angle, even if it's a small angle. Do something different, all right? Number four, ask God to give you, ask God to increase your creativity. You have not, because you ask not. We serve, we serve the God of the universe. He's the God of all creativity. Don't you think he has creative ideas in store for you? To give you? Have you ever seen people that did you like, oh my God, I never thought of that. Did you ask God to give you a creative idea? Did you ask God to give you a different twist on what you do for him? Amen. Glory to God. Ask God for ways, number five, ask God for ways to allow you to be more effective. I don't just want to be doing stuff valid. It's not effective. I want to see you doing something that's effective because if it's effective, then it's fruitful. Right. Amen. Break it down. That's good. Yep. And a lot of times in church, we're busy. <laughs> Sad to say, in Christian, we're busy, but we're not fruitful. Wow. He didn't cause us to be busy. He called us to be fruitful. Amen? Amen. Amen. The next point, what number, Matt? Now, I said, thank you. This is good. Go out. This is good. This is, I said, say he's stretching us tonight. Stretching. Now, some leaders would tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. Go out and connect and see something bigger than what you're doing. Let me wipe my sweat on there. Go out and connect and see something bigger than what you're doing. It will motivate you. If you have a youth ministry, prayer ministry, Whatever they should do, you should. Me as a pastor, I went Sunday to, to a, a, a ministry. I just, I'm telling you, Joe Olsey had a word from the Lord some, some weeks ago, and it just blessed me. But Joe Olsey was saying, uh, he had given this word about uh, connecting and sowing into what you want to see in your own ministry. And that's just what he was saying. So I'll take me as an example. use my, myself as an example. So if I see a ministry that's uh, maybe have like a really good anointed worship team, a really good praise team and a lot of people, maybe they have their own building, their own church. These are things that I want for us. So I need to go and connect. Y'all not saying that. Connect and sow into and glean from it so that same anointing that's upon them will come upon me. Y'all not saying nothing. Amen. 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 So because you need to broaden your horizon, you need to connect, you need to rub shoulders with people that are doing something bigger. Say bigger. bigger. Y'all getting this? Yes. 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 
We get out of church. I know a lot of people aren't to visit, but it's good to get out. You got you got to go see. We, I'm telling y'all about the spirit. We we gotta we we gotta get out of this Raleigh area, this little Union County cluster. Amen. Yeah, because when you have a good thing, you get comfortable. I don't want y'all to get comfortable. I don't want y'all just to be right in this Broadway, Linden, Clark, this little, safe little area. No, he said, go, go. So I'm telling you to go and connect. So if, if Pastor Ben, you see a big global um, prayer ministry or a big phenomenal school, you need to go and connect and see what they're doing. Do you know when you go see, go and visit somebody that's doing something bigger than you, it ignites you, it sparks you, it gives you new ideas. They said, wow, I can do that. And, and not that you copy them, but you, you, we, we glean. We glean from people that are doing something that's bigger than us. Because what happens is, when you find that that's, you want the same thing, that's what you need to be, you need to connect with. I'm not saying you got to join it, but I'm saying you need to connect and go visit. Say visit. And so. And so. Visit and so into it. So there's things I want, I believe in God for bigger and better. So I went Sunday and connected with a, another man of God's ministry, to, not to go be hauled up to the front, yeah. not to go sit on the front row, and right. sit my tail right in the back. Right, right. And I gleaned and I yeah. sowed. You know what I'm saying? Because you learn. Yes, you do. Amen. Look at Pastor Power here in Broadway. Mm -hmm. He started his ministry in his mother and father's garage. Mm -hmm. They called it God's Garage. He went from the garage, starting his ministry, right off of Leesville Avenue. Went from Leesville Avenue to the hotel on, on Route 1. They stayed there for a number of years, and now they're in their own building. God's no respect the persons. You don't hate on people, but you learn and you grow. And, and, and God, he wants to do the same for us. But first, you got to go. Just get, get out. you got to go and get out. All of my leaders that have ministries outside of here, I encourage you, go out. See some things. Glean from some things. Sow into some things. And... and, and because you want bigger, so you need to be around bigger. Amen. 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 You sow into that anointing. Isn't that good? Yes. Back in the days, don't you go over there and go to all the church for this church. You belong over here. You gotta ask me before you go visit. Oh, I've been around. Oh yes. Child, they knew you, especially in the Kojak church. They heard you went somewhere else, baby. You was crucified. No, go see something bigger. Go see something better. Go get ignited. Go get sparked. Come out of your comfort zone. Amen. Launch out into the deep. Get away from the familiar waters. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's why I love, and I thank God for my journey. I love as a, as a young teenager, 19, 20 years old, when Faith Fellowship came to Isla, New Jersey. It changed my life. Yes. Wow. I came up in a traditional Baptist church. But I'm with the Church of God in Christ, but the Word Church, that's where I got my spark. Yeah. Here in Pastor David T. DeMola, yeah. teach that word. Amen. Change my life. I, was not, I would come home, I would take the notes, and I would, I would do it with the scripture in him. And what he wrote, what scriptures he gave, I would look them up, write them. That's how I quote scriptures to this day, from being under that teaching, that good word ministry. They said, what you doing going over there? That ain't no black church. That ain't no black pastor. I was thinking I was trying to grow. Amen. But God, he uses that to, to get you out of just your own black church. I always tell y'all, I'm a black pastor, but I ain't just called the black folks. I'll tell y'all that all the time. Amen. I'm called to the body of Christ. Amen. And I thank God because Faith Fellowship taught me the multicultural. And let me tell you what Faith Fellowship, it taught me the word. I'm telling you that. That, I don't care what nobody says. Put their mouth on faith, fellas. That church, God sent that church. They said a lot of people free. A lot of people of color were set free. Let me tell you something. That faith fellowship was where I learned the word. Faith fellowship is where my gifts were ignited. And faith fellowship, I knew how to praise God, but that's how I came into worship. I learned worship from faith fellowship ministries. Them coming in there. You talk about, we don't do it now, I wish we did. You talk about sin in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You talking about an echo coming out of Cooper Avenue in Island, and it sounded like birds, it sounded like there was an echo. Those people were on one accord singing in the spirit. Yes. So you talking about a beautiful sound? Yes. And that just stirred my gifts up. It stirred the prophetic up on the inside. Yes. That's why even now, when you put that sin in the spirit music, I'm going there, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Because that, so it taught me a lot. But suppose I would have said, well, I ain't going to say fellowship. That ain't a black church. I would have stifled myself. Yes, 
That's right. Break it down. It would have caused me not to be able to go and travel to the years I used to travel to mix churches and preach and teach and how to deal with other people. I was in a church one time in Boston. The lady went on to be with the Lord. She said, she said, Pastor Mark, she said, when you walk down the aisle, she said, I felt the healing anointing. This was in a, in a, in a, a Caucasian church in uh, Massachusetts where I used to walk in and minister a lot. That woman was such an awesome woman. She blessed me so, she blessed me. She loved me so much. Uh, people I met on the road, she wanted to bless me so bad. She, uh, they're not doing now. She wanted to bless me. She sent me a thousand dollars in the mail. Two envelopes with a hundred dollar bill. She said, Pastor Mark, I'm, I'm saying just, just by getting out. So I'm saying when you get out of your comfort zone and get out of the familiar, whether it's a different denomination, culture, race, that's why I love Matt. Matt, Matt he has that same spirit. He goes to all different races of church because you need to reach all type of people. That's the body of Christ. Ain't no black body. Ain't no white body. It's Spanish, white, everything. It's, it's a global body. Asians, we're the body of Christ. Indonesian. Hallelujah. Give God a hand of praise. Stretch me. So go out and connect and see something bigger than you. And what, but I, I just want to say that when I went to Faith Fellowship as a, as a young kid, it changed my life. It was life, it was a life changer. It was a move of God. Because it taught me, it taught me the word of God, taught me scriptures, taught me worship, taught me to pray in the spirit. It was just, it was a God move for my life. And I'm going to encourage you, don't miss the God moves for your life. Right. Amen. If God tells you to come here, we, we're not, we're not hooked on membership. We don't do all that. If God tells you to come, that means it's something he wants to deposit in you. Yes. It doesn't mean where you go to church is bad. Right. It just means God maybe wants to add a little more, a different ingredient. Yes. Amen. He might want to add, you got, you might have a whole meal, he might give you some desserts over here. Yes. Or he might send you over and say, you got to go over and get you some vegetables. Or he may want to stir your gifts up. Yes. So the, the body of Christ is so narrow-minded, we say, oh, you go, oh, you go to Pastor Marks now? Uh, she just visited. She still goes to Mantle on Tuesday night. <laughs> you know, because we're so we're, we're, we're so that's just how we are. Instead of just saying, "Lord, I'm going to support." A Sunday morning, I, I was going through. So I said, "I need to go get fed. I need to praise God. I need to go get fed and go somewhere where they don't know me, so they ain't trying to call me to have a word, and testify, preach. No, just let me go sit and receive." Because you give and you give and you give and then you go through your own warfare and your own struggles and you're trying to pull your own stuff together for your own ministry and you're on E. People calling you for prayer, going to the hospital, going to, that's what I pray for. And I don't mind doing it, but you got to go as leaders. you got to go and feed yourself. And sometimes go feed yourself by yourself. Amen. Naturally and spiritually. Sometimes it's good when you just go to a nice restaurant and go sit by yourself and just eat. And relax, take a breather. Same spiritually. Sometimes you seem to go somewhere where you get fed and just sit back and just sit in the back and just receive and just take it. It's refreshing. Hallelujah. This is this is good stretch of teaching, ain't it? Yes. Hallelujah. Go out and connect and see something bigger than you and what you're doing. It will motivate you and give you fresh ideas. Get out of your comfort zone and see something. Go get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Sit under some other people that are doing prayer. Yes. Sit under some other people that are uh, in music. Whatever, whatever your gift is, just, just to be refreshed. Amen? Amen? It's insanity to think that you're going to get different results doing the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. As a leader, I'm striving to wean you off of me and into the more that God has for you. As a leader, I'm striving to wean you all off of me and into the more that God has for you. And nobody here has bothered me. I'm not saying that. But I, I want you to reach. It's just like your children. When your children get up, what, what is it? What is it the birds when they, they let them let them out the hatch so they can pick them out the hatch? Who is that? The um, eagles. Yeah, so they can go and fly and get on their own and soar and do other things. And that's what I'm saying. I want to see you all. Uh, press into the ministries and do what God has called you to do. So I want you to wait. I want you to come out of the comfort zone of Raw and see what God has in store for you. There's so much that God has because you're exceptional people. Amen. Glory to God. I want to brag on my leadership team. I have, a, I have an amazing leadership team here. 
All my leaders, just wave your hand. All my leaders, all my hope leaders, just wave your hand. Pastor Mark, can you wave your hand? That's Minister Will back there. I have an amazing uh, leadership team here. And I support them and will continue to support them. A lot, let me say this, a lot of selfish leaders, if you're not supporting them and only them, they ain't coming. Ooh. I've been under leaders that I've given my all to, that I've supported and have never come. But that's okay. I don't hold up to them in my heart. I'm just saying, I told you I'm say some stuff that's cutting edge uh, in here. Because you have to know that if God called you, they never come. You still got to do what God called you to do. What you sow and give, you sow and give from your heart. You do from your heart. But I'll tell you as a leader, there's none of y'all in here that if y'all started a ministry, I wouldn't come and support you. I've been in churches. <laughs> y'all have too. If you left, and when you leave, you the devil. <laughs> now, you y'all were the devil when y'all was putting the envelopes in this basket. Cutting edge teaching. But now you lead and you try striving to fulfill what God wants you to fulfill. Now you're the devil. That's the wrong spirit. I love all these leaders. If, if he started to work in South Jersey, I'd be in South Jersey backing him up and supporting him. If, if Minister Steph and Minister Will did a ministry and did something for God, I would be right there supporting them. If Pastor Bear or Pastor Matt, they, I would support them. Why? Because they have supported me. I think it's a trap. I think it's a disgrace. That people have sat in churches for years and years and have sown and given and blessed. And you have some that never walked, stepped a foot inside their church. Ooh, I ain't throwing shade, I'm sure. I'm throwing truth. It's terrible. Even family members. Sorry, Dylan. This ain't the Sunday morning message. You're in master class tonight. It's a disgrace, to say the least. But you got you don't. But the thing is, you don't hold nothing in your heart. You learn from it. So I want to make you stronger. That if you if you do something for God, your family's never come. You keep doing it. You keep doing what God called you because God will send the people around you to support you and to help you when you need it. Amen. Amen. Don't put your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on God. Because in the natural, it's very hurting. It's very discouraging if you take it inward. But you got to know that I got to set my affection on things above and not on things of the earth. So I'm making you strong leaders that if you ever start to work and people that don't support you, that you support, you keep going on. You keep pressing in because God's got a people that he'll send from the south. This man, whenever he comes up here, he has to, he spends over $100 just coming here. Maybe 150 just coming here from South Jersey. By the time he sows and gives and pays tolls, y'all not saying nothing, and puts gas in his car. That's a leader. Amen. You got people that can walk across the street and won't come. That's the truth. Tell the truth. So I have phenomenal leaders. So I'm, just, I'm building you with leaders because you can't stop there. But if you do what God calls you, God will raise up people that will come and love you and support you and help you. When your own natural family doesn't come, God will send people that will love you and support you. Keep going. When people that you've sown tire tirelessly years don't come, you got to keep going, and you got to keep your heart pure. Amen. Let's give God a hand, praise. This gonna make y'all strong leaders. You can't. exceptional leaders can't fit in and stand out. That mess is good. You can't fit in. And stand there. You can't, you can't try to fit in every crowd, every click, everything. No, you can't fit in the stand. I want to stand out. Amen. 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 I want to be different. When I was at Second Baptist down the street, I love that church. That's my home church. No shade. I still go back there and preach whenever they ask me to preach. I love the pastor there. I love the church. But one thing I liked about it, one thing I, I appreciate about uh, Reverend Healy is that they allowed me to be me. And boy, uh, was I a different breed from what they was used to. Baby, I walked around that church preaching like I was Crespo Dollar up and down the aisle. I'm like, ooh. Ooh, why you, uh, one of them ladies said, you can't stand by the pool. I said, I got to move. They <laughs> said, you're good, but you just move so much. But I was keeping them awake. 
That's because I'm an exceptional leader. I don't do everything like everybody else. When you're exceptional, you're going to have your own edge. You're going to have your own style. You're going to have your own way of doing what you do. But let me tell you something. The people like it. They said, um, Minister Mark, we like you. They said, I ain't fall asleep today. I was like, you ain't going to fall asleep with me walking around this church. She saw me there. She came to see me. Amen. Yeah. Just moving around. So I'm saying, be exceptional. Don't be afraid to be in the skin you're in. You're exceptional. You're different. Don't try to be like nobody else. We don't need no more Joyce Myers. I love Joyce Myers. We don't need no more T.J. Stewart. You don't, you don't need no more Marcus Bryant. The, the, the mold has been broken here. Be who God made you to be. We admire our leaders. We love our leaders. But, I, but you, you are exceptional. You're different. When you look at twins and triplets, they all have different fingerprints. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoying this? Yes. All right. I'm going to talk about, um, when I talk about prayer, did I fin yeah, I finished on the store of my leaders. Y'all were blessed when I talk about for your leaders. Was that good? Stretching you? Okay. Um, even my senior citizens, I, you may be here, you may be a senior citizen, or you may be somebody who's home and sick. This came to me later. Maybe someone who's home said, well, I can't do nothing for God. I'm older. I don't drive anymore. This just came to me tonight when I was, this is so good. Uh, I don't drive anymore. I can't get out to church. I'm in a wheelchair. I can't move. I had a husband or wife, but they passed. I'm the only one left. I outlive my family. You know, God can still use you. You know what came to me tonight as I was preparing? A senior citizen. You might be home and you can't get out. You can't move about. You can't, but you can sit there and turn on the news. And when those things come up, different affairs around the world, you can pray. I was so encouraged today when I watched the news and that three-year-old boy they found in North Carolina that stayed outside below 2-0 and he found him alive on the second day, three years old. And the news is saying he's a miracle. Let me tell you something, you can stay home and birth miracles. Y'all gonna make me run. You can stay home and pray and birth miracles. And that's what I did. I didn't go into law. I'm not going to say I went to tra travailing and long, you know, trying to get no credit for me. But when I heard it, I prayed. I said, Lord, let them find him. Yes, yes. So let me tell you something. People so deep and say, oh, I don't watch the news. It's so negative. No, as a prayer warrior, as a leader, you need to watch the news. You need to know what's going on in there. If you don't need to have your head be so uh, heavenly minded, you know, earthly good. Let me tell you something. You might not have to be behind a pulpit. You might not whatever, but you can stay home and watch the news and you can get you a journal and you can pray and you can say father wherever that baby is that baby was covered for two days overnight outside that's a miracle you think God didn't spare that baby's life for a reason so I'm telling you when you go to the senior building um, pastor Fett, you encourage them if you haven't you say you know what make up a list and start praying for people I don't know what to pray for turn on the news and just sit there you will be praying for the government yeah. You'll be praying for the president. Yeah. You'll be praying for the nation. Right. You'll be praying for people that need some. Everything you need is right there. That, let that be your ministry. I got a TV news ministry that when I see things on the news, I pray. I make a difference from my bedroom. Yeah, my children are grown. Nobody comes to me, but it's me and God. And I'm making a difference through prayer in my house. That's my ministry. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. You're here to make a difference. Yes. yes. I don't want normal. I want exceptional in every area of my life. Hey, listen to this. This is so good. Exceptional people look like look at look like average everyday people. Really no different from anyone else. And yet they are viewed differently from those regarded as just ordinary or normal. So what is it that makes some people exceptional and others not? It is the things they do that make them stand out in a crowd, cause others to respect them and make people want to be around them. By, adopt by adopting some of these things that exceptional people do every day, you will have the power to make yourself exceptional. Well, I want to give you eight things that exceptional people do every day. Eight things that exceptional people do every day, and I'm going to close. Number one, they learn from their mistakes. This mess is good. <laughs> Listen to this. Number one is they learn from their mistakes. No one is perfect and exceptional. People are no exception. They have taken wrong turns. All of us have taken wrong turns, made bad decisions. 
But normal people will make mistakes, hit a roadblock, and simply give up. Amen? Exceptional people look at the, listen to this, how many exceptional people are in the house? Exceptional people look at their mistakes and figure out a way to make that negative a positive. Bill Gates, who built Microsoft from a tiny company in his garage to a soft, software conglomerate, recently talked about mistakes made as the company was developing. He said that the company met those problems head on and adjusted as necessary to move forward. So you learn from your mistakes and you move forward. You learn from what doesn't work at the prayer summit, and you move forward. You see who's not on your team, and you move forward. You don't shut the whole thing down because, one, you got two bad apples. These are all good apples up here, amen? So with exceptional people, you learn from your mistakes. But you don't just learn. You keep moving. You learn the lesson. You get the wisdom. And then you keep doing what it is that God has called you to do. You learn. Say, I learn from my mistakes, and I don't stop. Number two, the second way exceptional people do is you compliment others. Everyone is amazing in his or her own way, and exceptional people have a way of letting those around them know that they are valuable and appreciated. Low self-esteem is a significant problem in today's society, which is why offering a compliment can go a long way toward making someone feel better. You may be unaware that someone left home that morning feeling frumpy and exhausted, so complimenting him or her uh, could, change, could completely change their attitude for the day. A coworker may be concerned about a project he or she is working on and it's not going well, so mentioning the good work he or she has done, did on a recent report, could give him the confidence that boosts him. So you compliment us. I, I, I compliment a man, a woman, I'm telling you, I just love to compliment and love and encourage because people need to be encouraged. Amen? Compliments go a long way. Number three, keeping it moving. Be considerate of others. Exceptional people are considerate of others. Every day, exceptional people remember to be considerate of others. They understand that it is selfish to care only about themselves, so they work to ensure that the world is better for others as well. I love this. Kathleen Connors, a surgical nurse in Vermont, stopped at a diner after working her 12-hour overnight shift. As she sometimes did, she paid, the bill for, she paid the bill for strangers, I love this, sitting at a table next to her. Her exceptional behavior triggered a chain of events that was repeated at the diner 46 times that day. Look what happened after she did that thing. Domino effect, yep. Demonstrating how a random act of kindness can snowball into a significant event. Kathleen's generosity and need to be considered of others shows that anyone can become extraordinary with just a simple act. Amen? Amen? So be considerate of others. When you can, bless other people. Amen. Amen. Number four, remain humble. Say, remain humble. Remain humble. We know humility is the way. Amen? Amen. Exceptional people don't think of themselves as, have, as anything other than ordinary. They often deflect praise by offering credit to those around them. Take Monet Davis, a 13-year-old pitching sensation who threw a sh shut out in the 2014 Little League World Series. Monet was the only girl on her Philadelphia team, yet when people complimented her, claiming she was a role model to young girls, she deflected the praise to her teammates. So you remain humble. Humble. Amen? Amen. Number five, love life. Say love life. love life. This is so good. Exceptional people understand that life is the most precious gift anyone can be given. Every life is worth living to its fullness every single day, and that is what exceptional people try to do. They understand that anything is possible as long as you love life and share that feeling throughout each day. People begin to turn to you for positive energy and in turn develop their own positive outlook on life. Love life. Amen. These are some practical things. Amen. Number six. I love this. Push the limits. They push the limits. Push the limits. Exceptional people push the limits. People whom others feel are exceptional push limits of what they believe they can do. They understand that limits are defined within. Travis Rice, a world-renowned snowboarder, said, we will never know our full, listen to this, we will never know our full potential unless we push ourselves to find out. That is so good. I'm going to read that again. We will never know our full potential unless we push ourselves to find out. This is especially true of, of Jared Martin, a skydiver who was paralyzed from the chest down after a jump went wrong when he was only 18. Rather than let, rather than let his, this limit, Jared became the first disabled person to complete 
11 base jumps in Norway, a feat he completed in 2014. Jared, like most extraordinary people, believes in himself, never letting doubt enter his mind as he strives to push limits past his ability and achieve goals even able-bodied people cannot accomplish. you got to push yourself. Push yourself into new. Push your limitations. And we know as believers, we say, oh, now I want to him that is able to exceed the above, all oh, we have to go, man, one of God that works on us, and we won't move. Yes. One little thing comes to distraction when you get discouraged. And yes, we get discouraged, but you got to push. They push. Right. And we know as saved folks that push means pray until something happens. They push the limits. limits. Alright, number seven. Have a higher purpose. Exceptional people realize that they have a higher purpose in life and do things every day that point them toward achieving the goals of that higher purpose. Viktor Frankl, who survived three years in concentration camp during the Holocaust, has said that knowing that his suffering had meaning is what kept him alive. He knew that his life had a purpose and that he had to stay alive to serve that purpose. Extraordinary people are better able to overcome obstacles as they focus on their life's purpose rather than on the obstacle in their way. You gotta move past the obstacles. Everybody has obstacles. Amen. This month was like an emotional obstacle for me. <laughs> but tonight, I'm telling you, I feel the power of God. I feel that 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 this is moving us forward. That our master class, we're gonna move forward. So 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 I was thinking about this today. Let me tell you something. Anybody that we know that we admire, that carries a, a strong anointing, you better know behind the scenes they don't been through something. There's, there's nobody that's highly anointed of God and you don't go through nothing. You're going to go through. Amen. Whether the enemy hits your family, whether it hits your finances, whether it hits your physical body, whatever the case may be, there's no one that carries a high anointing and you don't go through. Amen. Now you don't stay through, but you go through. Amen? Amen. He allows our mess to become a message. Amen. And our test to become our testimony. Amen? Amen? Last one, number eight. Exceptional people take actions. They take action. Take action. Glory to God. Exceptional people take action. They do not sit back and talk about ideas or plans. Let me say that again to the church. Exceptional people take action. They do not sit back and talk about ideas or plans. They come up with ideas and then work. Say work. work. To bring those ideas to life. Every inventor from the Wright Brothers to Steve uh, Jobs began with a simple idea, but they didn't stop there. But they, but, but they put a plan in motion to bring that idea to life. These things that exceptional people do every day are the same things you can do each day to make yourself stand out in a crowd as well. No one wants to be ordinary or normal, so why not take the steps today to become exceptional? exceptional. Amen. And she yawned to that, amen? <laughs> that was an exceptional yawn. <laughs> amen. So I just want to encourage you all, as we're going through 2019, don't stop at normal. Be exceptional in whatever you do. Be exceptional. Amen. I guess we done. I don't know what happened. What happened? Okay, they were ready for me to stop. Okay. All right, that's good. We're still taping, right? All right. Well, God bless you. We thank you for this masterclass first night. Be blessed in Jesus. Let's give our Facebook family and YouTube family some praise. <laughs>